Well, if it isn't there, Raja. Amelia Earhart, is that you? Why, it must be over 30 years since we've seen each other. How are you, my old friend? Not too bad, considering. Life is rather more dull than it used to be. I know what you mean. How are you anyway, Thea? I was just thinking about you the other day. You were. It's nice. What could possibly prompt the great Amelia Earhart to spare a thought for me? You were always a role model to me, you know. For a long time, I felt jealous of you. <laughs> you don't have to. No, please. I must say that's been on my mind for many years. I was up against it from the beginning. No sponsors wanted to support a women aviator in Germany in those times. So I moved to America. The sponsors were lining up there. I could have all the money and equipment I wanted, but on one condition. I had to become an American citizen. But I could not do it. Hitler was still on the rise. We were coming out of the Great War. Even I got caught in his propaganda for a while. International relations were contentious. But all I wanted was to fly. It seemed to me during those times, while I was suffering setback after setback, you appeared and stole my dream. You and Ruth Elder. I didn't trust you, even though I was the one under suspicion. I'm so sorry you felt that way, Thea. But being with you all soon taught me a valuable lesson. You are fabulous pilots, worthy competitors. And there was such camaraderie between us. Competing in the Cleveland Air Race taught me that. Those were fine times. <laughs> they were. But then it all changed. I made an arrangement with my father that if he loaned me the money to pay for the legal fees from a sponsor who had embezzled my money, that I would never fly again. So I learned the craft of journalism and resigned to my new existence. But then the opportunity of a lifetime. The, the McRobertson, McRobertson London to Melbourne International, International Airways. Airways. Ah, the Ivor, my little stoke. I was thrilled to secure a seat as a passenger on the KLM DC-2 aircraft in my role as a journalist. Things were going well. We had departed London on October 20 and I longed to be in the cockpit. It was a long trip, 19,800 kilometers. And I was grateful to be part of it at all. We were more fortunate than some. It was said that we were fresh as daisies when we disembarked for a stopover in Dubai. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. It's hard to look fresh when you are suffering the effects of dysentery. The final stretch of the race was one of the greatest events of my life. Only on reflection do I realize how fortunate we were. We encountered what was described as the worst storm Albury had ever seen. At the time, I was not afraid. The wonderful Captain Parmentier and First Officer Moll were not communicating to the passengers just how dangerous it was. They really are the best pilots the world has ever seen. I learned a lot from them. Holland can be proud of them. They have made the history of commercial aviation. Their actions were equaled only by the people of all. 
Never have I seen such community, spirit as what I experienced on that night. In the dead of the night, the people of Albury, out they came from their beds. In the lights of Albury lit up the night sky. 160 lights, illuminating rolls of salvation into the darkness, and we could land safely. What an experience. And then I made my way back to America, where you presented me with the wings around the world for peace award for the Club of 99 at the White House. With Eleanor Roosevelt. And don't forget being the first woman in the world to be accepted as a quiet bird man. Not to mention all of your other many achievements. And to think you were jealous of me. I am sorry. Don't mention it. I think we're even. I think we are. Thank you.